Now from right here, as he works into impact, do, 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 you'll see how that sacrum just peels out of there and works dramatically away from the target. Okay, when you're ready, as I'm turning into the backswing, do, 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 that way, mm -hmm. right, there goes the sacrum, starts to rotate, uh, or the pelvis is rotating and it's gonna move towards the target. Mm -hmm. Well, where's the belt buckle going? Away from the target. Away from the so target. So in essence, the pivot point is somewhere in the middle of the of the pelvis. Hey everybody, we're back with Riley Andrews from Elite. Quite a bit's changed here at Elite over the last year, I think. You guys have yeah. grown. Your presence has, has gotten really big. Yeah. Uh, thanks to you. No, not all. <laughs> thanks to you guys. You guys have the good um, content. I just helped shine a little light on it. Hey man, all, all we're trying to do is, is help people with this game. Cool. Um, but yeah, more staff, more students. It's awesome. It's good. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. Sweet. So let's talk a little bit about a really cool concept that I've talked about it before. You guys talk about it a lot. Yeah. And that is the sacrum move. Sacrum move. So what is the sacrum move? Uh, well, first off, shout out Luke Brackey on sacrum move. Sacrum is your tailbone. So in essence, what we're looking at is just how it's moving, like obviously into the backswing, but in transition and then through the strike. I think it's a great point to look at because for a lot of years, especially like back in like the 90s and early 2000s, everybody was talking about the belt buckle and how the belt buckle needs to rotate and face the target. And so we're looking at like anterior side, like our face yeah, on. Front side. And one of my favorite views, and I think one of your favorite views to just look at students and how they're moving, is posterior view, rear view. Heck yeah, I love to film from behind just so I can see how things are operating. Yep, exactly, which I mean you see like how the pelvis is moving, how that sacrum is moving, how it ties into the spine, which is something that we're going to chat about today as well. Yep. How the ribs are operating, you just see like this really cool image from back there. Yep. Um, and in essence, what we're saying is that the sacrum at some point needs to move quite dramatically away from the target. In fact, our longest hitters that you see like on the PGA Tour or live now are guys that move their sacrum the most from like transition. So somewhere in like the P4.5, P5 range and then all the way through the hit. So through like the P6.537 range, it's moving a ton for the big ballers. So when we say it's moving, which way is it moving for those at home? Is, are, they, are they moving more forward or is, the, or is it reversing course and going back where it came from? Yes. And even beyond that. <laughs> so it's moving forward. So I guess I'll just demonstrate let's, here. Let's do a little demo for so the camera. So this little belt loop right here. Okay, that is, that's pretty much right where our sacrum is. Yep. And at the start, from right here in the backswing, I'm going to go ahead and move. And as I'm moving and turning here, the sacrum is going to move towards the target in the yes. backswing. Now, you'll see this in Rory where they like this recentering phase from probably P3-ish all the way to P5. They might actually move the sacrum even more towards the target as they're finishing up this load phase. Yep. And then from there, as they start to turn out of there, you notice that that sacrum starts to move away from the target as they get into the strike. And then eventually, obviously, they're gonna peel out, out of there. But from P1 all the way until roughly P5, that sacrum's moving towards the target and then it dramatically moves away from it into it the strike. Curls around behind. Yep. I mean, there's this talk about like the pivot point. Well, shoot, there's like endless amounts of pivot points. And in there's our not swing. really one pivot point in the swing. The, exactly. The pi where the pivot point is actually is changing places constantly as well. 100%. And I think, um, let's see if we had like, well, we'll do this. Like if we're looking at our pelvis, so if my pelvis is sitting like this and somehow we just had like a bird's eye view right here. Well, this is good. So like we would have, <clears throat> in essence, that would be belt buckle and this would act as the sacrum. So if I move this this way, so from the camera angle, we'd have a bird's eye view. As I'm turning into the backswing, doot, 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 that way, mm -hmm. right, there goes the sacrum, starts to rotate, uh, or the pelvis is rotating, and it's going to move towards the target. Mm -hmm. Well, where's the belt buckle going? Away from the target. Away from the so target. So in essence, the pivot point is somewhere in the middle of the, of the pelvis, right? Then we would recenter. There's into P5, mm -hmm. right? And then from here, if we're really rotating, <laughs> there goes the sacrum. It's going to spit it out away from the target. If you have, again, in my opinion, I think in your opinion, a proper pivot in the pelvis. Yes. If the lead side's putting on the brakes here and not continuing to float this yep. way, then that sacrum's gonna naturally 
yeah turn and go back behind you exactly what what creates that sacrum move in in your opinion that's a blend of a lot of things i don't think anything moves in a golf swing independently i think everything's tied together as a system yep so the lead leg is definitely putting on the brakes the torso is starting to unwind and bend this leg's got to straighten makes yep. the sacrum go around behind you. Yep. It's all a big system-wide thing. Yep. Nothing's doing anything independent of anything else. Man, you bring up a really, really cool point there too because just our culture in, in golf instruction, all those great positions that we see are because of a system. And yeah. I think it's really important for everybody to know, no matter how quality a player you are, that you can overdo or underdo anything. And you're just looking to like kind of get in between the bookends so you feel right as an athlete. And how much of one yeah. thing one athlete needs versus another athlete, we all vary slightly for yeah. various reasons. We don't all hold the golf club the same, so the face right. conditions are different. So we can't all move exactly the same way. Sure. So, cool. yeah, sacrum move. Move it away from the target after P5. Here we go. So let's walk everybody through a good elite golf school drill for teaching this sacrum move. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I think what would be really cool just to see this, go ahead and just make a backswing. So you notice there when Milo makes a backswing, he does this really well, how that sacrum move towards the target. Now go ahead and land like you, like you talk about. There you go. So now you can definitely see like all the way into impact at P7 that that sacrum dramatically moved away. So go back to uh, address if you could for us, Milo. Okay. Good. And in general, Milo's sacrum is right over the top of this stripe or this crack right here between both mats. Okay, so go ahead and make a backswing. Woo, so you'll see that that sacrum is now on this side. It's over this mat. Now float into P5. There you go, excellent. Now you see that it actually went further that way. That's our fully loaded phase right there. Now from right here, as he works into impact, Doot, 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 doot. You'll see how that sacrum just peels out of there and works dramatically away from the target. It's a big move from like P5 all the way yeah. to P7. It's a huge move. It's a dramatic move. So this is one of the exercises that we really like to do, Milo. Where you just grab and... Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and hold you right here. Go ahead and hit one at like 50%. You're actually going to hit a ball here. You guys watch out over there. <laughs> this could go anywhere. <laughs> okay. When you're ready. So all I'm doing is pulling Milo both of those belt loops away from the target and really it's a curve it's a curved path but the you probably felt that pressure when i did that a little bit know. yeah yeah i mean you move really well already so you're probably not going to feel a ton of pressure go ahead and hit one again Ooh. it's hit so nice Now, Milo is obviously a super skilled mover when it comes to the systems that we like to see. There's certain athletes that we work, work with that are like super early, early extenders, right? Like yeah. they start extending, some of them start extending like right off of P1, right? And then just yeah, continue I, to do so. In, in the world I'm in with mostly older players, everybody's extending... Right yeah. from the get-go. It's extension, 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 it extension. Just it just going keeps going. going toward the ball. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you just crash it in there, and now you don't have any room, and that just creates all kinds of chaos. But even for some of our, our players that move really well into, into the backswing, one of their big hit mechanisms or hit patterns is like just rotating and laterally drifting that pelvis towards the target, yeah, and it just crashes their ribs. It kind of gets the golf club in an okay hit position, but then through the strike, it's like anybody's so, guess. They wind up shallowing the golf club by tilting their whole yep. body this way. Exactly. And then the low point is hard right. to manage. So go ahead and show that, like while we have this camera angle right here, like go ahead and like you're gonna uh, hit one out of the bay, actually. So we like can I'm gonna see. hit one that yep, way. Yep. yep. So, so we're we gonna do it wrong. These work. Yeah. So this is the wrong. So go so ahead and do be... uh, go into P4, and then that. There you go. Exactly. So go ahead and do that again. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts, <laughs> right? So just up here. So we'll see that, and we'll see this start to rotate out that way, right? And it just whacks the whole thing out, right? Yeah. It's just... And it's so common. Everybody I see... Well, yep. What I really see a lot of is people drift into the, the trail side like this so that they don't actually get their sacrum to move toward the target yes. in the backswing. I yep. see a lot of this. Yep. And now they've got to push out of this trail side. Yes, And exactly. that's what they wind up with. Exactly. It's super interesting because like the center of mass in the ribs then and the center of mass of the pelvis are just countering one another. It's I mean, teeter-totter. Yeah, we just have to do that because we don't want to fall over, right? If I have my center of mass in my, in my pelvis moving forward and the center of mass in my ribs moving forward, I'm off balance. I'm going to fall over. Oh, yeah. 
right? So that same same action happens, or same theory happens, if I move my pelvis Laterally. away from the target. Yeah, then well, your ribs, ribs have to do? tilt that way. Yeah, to just keep you in just general human and balance. Then to, yep. to yeah, next. feel like I'm going to make some speed, now I've got to shift my lower body this way, and my upper body has to... It's just super whacked. It's just a bad system. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, it's just a really bad, bad system. Yeah. So yeah, that's... Uh, I think a really simple exercise to do. I mean, even at home, you could put your, your buns right up against a wall. And, and as you make a move, I mean, you, what we're wanting is a little bit more depth than what the wall is actually gonna allow for. But you could definitely feel the right cheek for a right-handed player, the trail cheek, working away from the target, right, or towards the target, rather. And then in that transition, you could feel it slide away from the target, and that's gonna put you in some pretty good yeah, like I, general movement patterns. I like to have players move like an inch and a half, two inches away from the wall, mm -hmm. and then, and then in transition it. create that depth and make the, the pelvis slide. That way they're actually yep. creating a little bit of depth. You just made that drill even better. Yeah, So. yep, absolutely. Sacred move, move it away, move it so away. We, one more time from down the line, and Riley, you're gonna move me through the same motion. Yep, exactly. You ready? Ready when you are. So which direction does that feel like I'm pulling you? Feels like you're pulling me kind of away from the ball and away from the target. So yeah. Kind of this way. Like yeah, 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 yeah. That's perfect. So it's not like humans like to think just in lines, right? We don't like to think in shapes and curves. So I'm not just pulling, like you just said, away from the target only. It's like you said, it's it's away immediately, and then I'm sweeping you yeah, out so of there that way. A yeah. circle like this. <laughs> yep, exactly. So this that's energy is going this way and the club's going that way, spitting it out. That's exactly right. So that's even better. Like what a great image that is because once you get into that fully loaded phase around P5, to get the club head spit out on its curve, target side, we need the center of mass of the pelvis to be moving away and that's its counter mechanism to actually shoot the energy out. Otherwise, it's just a big block. You're going to work hard and not hit it anywhere. No fun. Okay, so let, Riley, let's, let's wrap this up and kind of... Just put a bow on it for everybody. Yeah. So what are the keys here to take away? Well, big keys are, I mean, the, just understanding where the sacrum is moving is one of many pieces to this entire system as you yeah. brought up, right? So I think it's just a really good point in space to look Yeah. because we see a whole lot of really good stuff there. So first takeaway, sacrum needs to move towards the target in the backswing, and I think a and then maybe just a tick more toward it in that transition phase to P5. Exactly. And that's kind of what does like, that do for us? Yeah. So that one that recenters us, and there's a lot of different ways to recenter. We have yeah. preferred ways for sure. Uh, and some stuff that we're going to talk about in, in ribs where the center of mass in the ribs here in just a sec too. But in general, there's a loading phase, which is from P1 to P5 and P5 being honey hole. If you watch <laughs> some of our other, our, our other videos, um, but that is the, the fully loaded phase in the golf swing. Mm -hmm. And so in essence, the sacrum for most players is moving towards the target during all of that phase, all the way to P5. And then from P5 to P7. It's the it's, unloading phase. It's the unload, it's the start of the unloading phase. So yeah. now we're, we're peeling that sacrum away to sling the club out. Yeah. And that's an easy way to get rid of energy in the golf swing. Awesome, way to, that's a really good way to explain it. So hope you guys liked this video, if you did, hit the like and subscribe. Come visit Riley and his crew at Elite. They have an awesome, you guys have awesome social media platforms and lots and lots of good information. So come visit them. Come visit us as well.